These cute, innocent, eager puppies are perhaps the only in the world whose mere touch poses a hazard to human health. They are among the roughly 900 strays who live in and around the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone, where descendants of the pets live after being left behind in the hasty evacuation. A recent study found the canines had acclimations of radioisotopes, and visitors are warned not to touch the dogs, as their fur likely contains radioactive particles that are dangerous to human health. Researchers explain that most of the meat and water the dogs ingest every day is itself radioactive, and these particles accumulate to potentially dangerous levels in their bodies over time. In addition, nearly every object or surface they touch in their habitat is contaminated with radiation. And as these particles attach themselves to the fur, the cuddly strays turn into cuddly, free-roaming, radioactive potential pets to unsuspecting families. Fearing the growing population has already begun venturing outside of the exclusion area to come into contact with humans, an effort has begun to spay or neuter and release the radioactive pups to control their population. In 1970, Pripyat, Ukraine was founded as the ninth closed nuclear city in the Soviet Union, which would serve to support the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. By 1986, the plant's four 1,000 megawatt reactors were operational and meeting about 10% of Ukraine's growing energy needs before tragedy struck. Nobody is entirely sure exactly what happened that infamous night, but some fateful combination of failed technology and human error led to the greatest nuclear disaster the world had ever seen. On April 26th, a young, inexperienced engineer, who had only been in a senior position for three months, led the plant through an overnight safety test to simulate the station's response to a total power failure. In order to cool the reactor's core and prevent a meltdown, 7,400 gallons of water per hour had to be pumped through each of 1,600 fuel channels. The April 26 test was meant to discover if the reactor's own thermal energy could be used to power those coolant pumps in the event of an external power loss. As part of the preparations, the emergency core cooling system that was intended to spill water into the core should the primary coolant system fail was disabled, as were numerous other automated safety systems designed to safeguard against nuclear meltdown. At some point during the test, as a result of the engineers failing to carry out the experiment precisely, Chernobyl's Reactor 4 experienced an unintended thermal power increase that the coolant system could not keep up with. When the thermal power reached 10 times the output under normal operations, the coolant lines finally burst under the extreme steam pressure. With the primary cooling system gone and the backup system disabled, a second explosion occurred only a few seconds later that affected the core and blew the roof off the reactor. Observers recalled, quote, burning lumps of material and sparks shooting into the air above it, along with what appeared to be bluish laser lights shooting into infinity, an effect caused by ionization of the air. Now exposed to the open air, Oxygen fed a graphite fire that would rage inside the reactor for two weeks and release 400 times the amount of radioactive material as the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima. The radioactivity was most concentrated in the regions surrounding Chernobyl, but the hazardous particles drifted into the atmosphere and carpeted large swaths of Ukraine, Russia, and Eastern and Northern Europe with fallout. By the time investigators arrived at the plant the morning after the meltdown, two people were dead, and more than 50 were hospitalized for radiation exposure. Even though this was the largest civilian release of radioactive material in history, the 50,000 people in the nearby city of Pripyat were not immediately informed of the meltdown, and instead went about their normal day. It was not until 24 hours after the explosion that an evacuation order was finally announced. Residents were asked to gather only vital personal belongings for what they were told would be a temporary three-day evacuation. And as a result, most left behind their valuable possessions, and some left behind their pets with overfilled food dishes, believing they would be reunited in a few short days. But when the severity of the radiation contamination became apparent, the evacuation was made permanent, and nobody was allowed to return home. Over the course of the next ten days, more than 130,000 people who lived within a 19-mile radius were evacuated, creating the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone. Many dogs reportedly tried to chase after their owners as they were driven away on buses. Fearing that the radioactive animals would leave the zone in search of their masters, snipers were dispatched in an act of precaution and mercy. Those few dogs that managed to elude the hunters eventually became the feral ancestors of the radioactive puppies present today. 
In the immediate aftermath of the disaster, abandoned pets and wild animals in the region were bathed in radiation. Those nearest the power plant that received the highest doses likely suffered acute radiation poisoning and showed symptoms similar to what humans would experience from a nuclear bomb blast. It is not known exactly how many animals succumbed to their symptoms, but the death toll was significant. For those that lived, the extremely high doses of radiation negatively impacted reproduction processes and cycles for the first six months, which also contributed to the immediate, drastic reduction in wildlife populations in the aftermath of the Chernobyl disaster. Surprisingly, after the first year, animal populations in the exclusion zone began to rebound and became fascinating research subjects for biologists. Subsequent generations of most animals in the area have appeared to thrive in the zone, despite near-constant exposure to radioactive particles within their habitat. Researchers have discovered some unusual mutations, behaviors, and effects that result from long-term radiation exposure, many that remain a complete mystery. Populations of invertebrates, creatures like spiders, bees, ants, and grasshoppers, have suffered most in the exclusion zone. Biologists say this is likely because radiation contamination is greatest where it's settled within the Earth's topsoil and where most invertebrates live or lay their eggs. Spiders in the zone tend to make strangely shaped webs that lack consistent patterns or structural integrity, a mysterious effect of the radiation that biologists cannot explain. Unusual physical abnormalities have been observed in barn swallows in the exclusion zone, such as deformed toes and beaks, tumors, and albinistic plumage where the feathers entirely lack color. Other birds living in the exclusion zone have been found to have significantly smaller brains, as central nervous system development is hampered by a reduction in antioxidants available in the environment due to the radiation. Researchers suggest that such a deficit inevitably means the birds have a lower cognition, and are therefore less evolutionarily fit than their non-radioactive counterparts. Larger mammals, like moose, bear, deer, and wolves, tend to have larger habitats and may spend part of their time outside of the exclusion zone, and as a result tend to have less measurable radiation than smaller mammals, birds, and invertebrates. Chernobyl's wolves, in particular, have also returned as apex predators, unafraid to roam the post-apocalyptic landscape in broad daylight. It appears the wolves have learned to avoid the bones of prey, carcasses where radiation acclimates at levels unsafe to be touched by human hands. With over a thousand square miles restricted to human access, the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone is one of the largest truly wild areas in the region. Without humans hunting and destroying natural habitats, populations of large mammals have thrived and are actually higher in the zone than in nearby non-radioactive areas. Wolves have adapted to stalking prey from the roofs of houses and empty floors of ruined buildings and are now found in densities seven times greater than outside the zone. In the immediate aftermath of the Chernobyl disaster, radiation levels were so high that a lethal exposure could occur in minutes to hours. But today, radiation levels at Chernobyl are much lower, such that harmful amounts of radiation exposure only occurs over long periods of time in the zone. As a result, humans are now able to visit the zone with advanced permission and heavy monitoring. Roughly 5,000 people work in the zone as security guards and tourism staff, working in rotations of 15 days in, 15 days out, to keep the radiation exposure below harmful levels. Visitors' radiation exposures are monitored with Geiger counters, and people are screened at checkpoints. If radiation levels are too high, they must change their clothes and wash themselves as a precaution. As of 2016, 186 brave people live in the zone full-time. Most of these residents are elderly and have returned to their ancestral villages to live out their remaining days. With so little known about the effects of radiation on humans and animals over time, there is a great debate over what the long-term impacts will be. Many believe that over time, as the radiation dissipates, the effects on wild animal populations will too. Others, however, point to unusual mutations and mysterious phenomena associated with Chernobyl's radioactive animals as evidence of more strange, potentially dangerous consequences to come. Rumors persist of giant mutated wolves and monster catfish swimming in the old reactor cooling pond. For now, though, Chernobyl's radioactive puppies seem blissfully unaware of their plight, wagging their tails and approaching people without understanding why they can't be petted. A hard life awaits most, and it is not uncommon for individual dogs to disappear without a trace. The future of humans in the zone remains uncertain as well, 
because despite the recovery of some wildlife population, we do know the zone will remain unsafe for permanent human habitation for another 300 years, and it will take as long as 20,000 years for levels of radioactivity to return to pre-disaster levels. Even though Chernobyl remains alight with radiation, our understanding of the disaster's ultimate outcome remains in the dark.